Good morning, everyone. Delighted to be here. Uh, I flew down from Brisbane yesterday, so it was exciting to uh, get on a plane and go somewhere. So uh, two of my colleagues couldn't get here today. They're from stuck in Victoria. So hence, I've uh, come off the bench and delighted to be here, so thanks. Um, my background is I am a physiotherapist. So I currently work at the GABA at Queensland Sports Medicine Centre, and then I'm one of the directors, of which there are six, and, and we have nine staff at Joint Action. We're a small company, and we came out of research. So what I mean by that, Australian Coal and Research Project, they funded a program and we did a two-year project at a mine, at B, uh, Pi, uh, sorry, Peak Downs, which was a coal mine in central Queensland. So we're not uh, sensors that have come out of sport per se. We're using the sensors that are used in sport, but what we're doing is creating an algorithm based on risk scores, and we'll go into detail about that. So please, if you've got any questions, uh, sing out. One of the things is risk is hard to assess, risk is hard to manage, and that's why we did this whole project. The nice thing is we've gone from a research project to a commercial item. So it's something that's now physically working and in over 20 organisations across the US, the UK, New Zealand and Australia. It is only for manual handling task assessments. It is not in the sedentary workforce, so it's only in your physical workforce. I'll be out at an abattoir in central Queensland uh, next week and we're doing a lot with the meat industry in Queensland predominantly because we can get there. It's hard for us at the moment because of COVID to um, get out of, because we're all in, uh, in different parts of Australia to get to places, but Queensland's pretty vibrant and pretty active at the moment, so that's been great for us. Risk is a situation that involves exposure to danger or as we talk about in work-related issues, it's a hazard. If you have no exposure, you have no risk but we get exposed to risk every day. Some people we perceive as risk takers. Some people will have a crack at something because they embrace risk. We don't do that in the workplace where we should be shy of risk, we need to acknowledge there is a risk, but how do we control that risk? How do we assess the risk? How do we manage the risk? And that's what we've been able to um, establish at Joint Action Solutions. The key for all of us is what is work-related MSD risk? Well, there are factors, and there are multiple factors, and that's why it's hard to get on top of risk in the workplace. It's not due to one thing, so it's not a single bullet approach that will change things, like the old manual handling training, lifting training. Compliance is a horrible thing in the workplace, but we have to do it. I acknowledge we have to do it, but it doesn't change how the worker thinks about how they're doing their job. It doesn't make them assess how they're doing their job. It doesn't get engagement between worker and employer. So these are the things that we've been able to change in uh, Joint Action Solutions by using an automated risk assessment tool. It's tough to get on top, as I said, because there's multiple factors and these can cause chronic disorders or a singular injury. Why do we assess work-related MSDs? Well, the uh, whole idea is to make a difference. We're trying to prevent injuries and we're trying to do it in a more effective and targeted way rather than sort of Let's have a crack at that and see how we go. We're trying to target prevention economically. We need to meet our obligation to manage hazardous manual, manual tasks, and we've been able to develop something that's accurate and reliable, and we'll go through that. How do we currently assess MSDs? Well, in the workplace, it's a manual task risk assessment checklist. It's a tick and flick system. We'll video something on an iPad or a phone, and we'll look at our checklist, we'll go back to it, and we'll refer to it, and then we'll come up with something that hopefully creates an intervention in how to reduce or minimise that risk. Often it's an expensive problem, because not because of the injuries and the claims and the insurance that results, it's because of the fact that you've got to get the ergonomist who's going to charge you several thousand dollars to rock up and do an assessment. You will then get a report two to three weeks later, way after the event has happened or way after someone actually hurt themselves. The beauty of the automated system is it's instant. You get feedback straight away. So you're talking there and then about how can we do this differently? Is there a new approach? Is there a different approach? You're getting engagement, you're getting coordination between your worker and worker. No one knows their job better than the person actually doing the job. They're the people that are going to teach you and I in health and safety how to, can we do this differently. But now we're trying to quantify it. Now we're trying to get something that clarifies and supports or doesn't support the interventions that you're trying to introduce to alter or reduce risk. One of the biggest problems is often we use, it's called the rear vision mirror process, where we 
oh, there's been a near miss at work, or someone actually has hurt themselves. So we're using retrospective problems to actually try and create a solution. There's a new way to assess risk in the workplace, MSD risk in the workplace. <clears throat> it involves wearable sensors, of which there are five. There's one on the head, one on the neck, one on the low back, and one above each elbow. It's fast, it's accurate, it's objective, it's reliable, and it's automated immediate analysis, which means we can talk about it and review there and then. You can push a button and a report will go to a portal, and that portal means someone in Hobart can look at the assessment that you're doing in Devonport or Burnie or Lonnie. So it's all into a central database. So then it's getting communication between sites. That's the beauty of technology these days. The ability for us to communicate We've still got to talk people, but it gives us the opportunity to understand what's happening at that site, what's happening at that site, why do they have problems over there, why does this place have less problems? So we're able then as an organisation to get across things more accurately, quicker, more efficiently, more reliably. So we're getting automated immediate analysis and automated immediate reports. Uh, that's up at Peak Downs. This is just an example of what actually happens. <clears throat> so this is at a gold mine in Victoria. So this is in the crushing room, the sensors are on the body, and you'll have a neck. So we've got three columns, neck, uh, back, and arms, and you're going to measure flexion, extension, and rotation across each of those regions. Based on the algorithms that we've calculated, that will then develop a risk score. So it's not a measurement of movement. It's not saying you're bent at 20 to 45 degrees in the lumbar spine for 30 seconds. The sensors calculate that, and because of the Australian Code of Practice, Manual Hazardous Training, 2016 and 18, that then calculates a risk score. And the risk score will then determine what you do with that. We'll go into that in a bit more detail. <clears throat> so this is just an example of um, risk priorities in the workplace. And so we did a trial, and if we're looking at, we just picked 10 tasks, and then we, on this, which one is the, is that the, oh yeah, thanks. So the blue line is pre, so that's a risk score there, 80 and above, and the brown line is post. So we got a, a nice, across all 10 tasks, we we're able to re reduce that risk score. So that means that intervention that you've created or put in place is actually working. Because often these soft tissue injuries that occur in the workplace, they're cumulative. They're not due to one event. So by lowering the task each time, we're lowering the stress and the loads on the body. And that's the challenge for all of us in the workplace. The mature athletes, I like to call them, you know, we'll use the ageing worker, but they're mature athletes. They're still doing physical things. They're still working their body. They're significantly smarter and street smart than the young bloke that's going at a bullet at a gate. But the point is, we're dealing with mature athletes. So how do we look after them? And they're the people that are going to be very powerful in helping you understand the work and the workplace better. We've found by doing these, uh, ass assessing and managing and intervening, we're able to get better controls of risk. So for example, you could pick 20 highest work-related MSD risk exposures that you have either triggered claims or workers will say, this is tough when I do this. So they're the tasks, bang, you'll prioritise straight away. They're the things you need to address. They're the things that you'll need to target when you're doing assessments. What this will help you understand is, have I missed any of them? Because some of them will not be as bad as you thought they may be because of the human bias that we have. So this removes all those human biases, those prejudices that exist in the workplace around risk assessments because it's a manual process normally. Oh, I don't need to worry about that. That's never been an issue. Or, I know that area. Don't worry about that. We don't need to look at that. No, we need to try and stop that in the workplace. We need to try and be more accurate, more reliable, more consistent. This helps you achieve that. The central portal is, a, portal is a really powerful tool going to a database, as I said, because then it means you're across everything within an organisation. Look, one of the biggest problems for all of us is that there's lots of factors uh, in the workplace. And they're the, some of the factors, and they're all predominantly those task factors that, that occur. The diagram on the left, the sensors are small, they're about, basically, they're the five of them, and they're basically about the size of, uh, from your IP joint in your thumb to the end of your thumb. So they're that long and a bit wider than your thumb. They sit inside, and I've got a kit here, if you want to do an assessment today, we can. 
and then you'll get that. So that's the report on the left that is in the database. And one of the new features, and like any software program, we're always evolving and changing and modifying and correcting based on user feedback. One of the things we've been able to do now is blur faces. So we can now do that so we can have a nominity of subjects via the da database. The other thing that we've been able to do and what we're adding and that'll be launched in March next year is the biopsychosocial and the psychosocial elements. So we're doing some work with a company in Sydney called Houston. We have all the psychosocial, that's a hard word, but they always, they have very cool names. So we're working with them to add that via questions into the assessment. So then it's becoming more accurate. Look, the origins of work-related MSDs are multifactorial. And as I said, a single bullet will not be the answer. So it's a huge challenge. The frustrated worker, the annoyed worker, the disengaged worker, they still go to work, they still do their job. So there's those organisational risk factors. This is psychosocial. Oh, John didn't put my footy tips in, I've got the poops with him, so I'm going to be cranky today at work. I'm not going to be as efficient, I'm not going to be as reliable, I'm not going to be as thinking as I normally am. And then the individual risk factors. I'm stiffer, I'm older, I'm weaker, or I'm stronger, younger and stupid. All of these individual risk factors, all of these factors have a play in how we assess a task and have an impact on the outcome of that task. We're developing things to try and make sure we include those in task assessments. So it makes it hard to get uh, good risk controls without good risk assessment. So we're sort of flying blind for many years, and that's probably why musculoskeletal injuries have not reduced in the workplace in over 40 years. The claims are still occurring, the injuries are still occurring, and we're trying to get on top of things, but we're not doing it very well by what the system that we currently have. So we're trying to actually make it easier for you in the workplace to get better outcomes. And this is part of the matrix, why it's so difficult. So you can be grabbing the wrong tool. You can be, I don't normally do that job, but I'm doing it today because I'm filling in for someone. I may not have the necessary work skills to do that task. One of the kids threw up last night, I've had a bad night's sleep, I'm grumpy, I'm tired, I miss breakfast, the mortgage is due today. So the social factors, what does that all mean? I'm not as efficient, I'm not as considerate, I'm not as cautious, I'm not as thinking, I'm not as tuned in when I do that job. This is why MSDs are hard to get on top of. All the human factors, all those human elements. We're not robots. We're caring, feeling people, and sometimes we don't perform as well as we potentially could. We'd all love, you know, why did I get three votes on the BOG last weekend, and why can't I get it every weekend when I play a game of footy? It doesn't happen. So we've got to understand as humans, we think differently, we are not the same every time we do a task. So we can't also be on automated process with, with um, how we approach things at work, because we need to be mindful and tune in. So we love those micro pauses in the workplace, that step back, that think scenarios. They're really powerful phrases, but only if you use them. So we've still got to get people to think about how they're doing their job. And that's why it's hard with MSDs, because of all these human factors. So how do we currently manage uh, work-related MSDs? Well, the health and safety worker assessments, uh, they're common and currently they're done manually. Also, things like lifting training, which we've alluded, you know, it's, it happens and we do it and people come in, disappear and see in 12 months. So that happens across lots of organisations. The really powerful thing that going into workplaces and, and doing the assessments has been the worker feedback. I've been amazed how often they actually start talking about their job. These are people that apparently never talk about their job. These are people that never talk to anyone because they just rock in and do their job. But the engagement from the worker has been really powerful, particularly the younger workers, because they love technology. They're all over technology. It's a bit like our phones and our laptops. You know, we do the basic processes, but anyone who's younger than uh, 45, they're all over it. So they love technology. So it's a great opportunity to get those workers engaged as the mature athlete worker, because all of a sudden you've got top and tail, you've got old and young working together. Oh, look at this, look at that. Have you considered this? Have you tried that? then you can do another assessment, reassess with these changes, and you get it instantly. That's the beauty. It happens straight away. So the worker feedback has been pretty amazing. 
using near misses, well, that's not ideal because that's, that's, that's really post-event. That's really you know, the slips and trips, the falls. They're all the things we're trying to consider and eliminate. Uh, so we need that step back and stop and think. And the long-term injuries, they're unreliable. And work cover claims, well, that doesn't give you the whole picture just by looking at claims. It gives you an understanding, but not the whole picture. It's really, to me, it's become, as we've done this now for a few years, it's become easier to understand unless we... It, it's hard to assess risk. But if we want to manage risk, we need to assess it. And the automated system makes it so much easier because when then we're getting to this preventative focus. We're trying to actually eliminate things before they happen rather than what we currently do. It's a reactive process. The near miss, the claim, the long-term injuries. That's when you ring the ergonomist. That's when you'll get someone external to the organisation. The big thing is we're trying to get people like you who are in the workplace, we don't want to come in and do it. We train you how to do it. You've got to be the champion within the organisation that's trying to make a difference because unless you get someone that buys in, it ain't going to happen. So we don't want to uh, get people who love the idea, put, I've got a kit here, chuck it in the cupboard and use it once every six months. It doesn't work like that. You're not going to make a difference in your workplace unless you're using it regularly, unless you're actually embracing the technology because it is really quite powerful. Because we can get these simple, accurate, quick, cost-effective assessments done. Assessments historically are expensive, time-consuming and they rely on someone interpreting what they see based on the code of practice. So human error, human biases still exist in the manual task risk assessments. So doing automated task assessments, it provides an upstream model of care. So instead of working down rather than, oh, we've got a problem now, we've got to change it. So we're really trying to make sure we're ahead of the game, if you like. So it's got this always involving, always talking, always communicating, always assessing. Remember, risk is hard to manage. And unless we assist it, assess it, sorry, we won't change it. Best practice. You will become an organisation that embraces a new technology. You'll be a market leader. You'll be doing things that no one else is doing. Uh, we're currently in Tasmania. We are at Sears and Buck, Tassie Rail, EMP and Sodexo. So we're currently working with those organisations in Tasmania. Uh, I was last year with Southern Water, when Southern Water became, became a body, when um, all the local councils amalgamated into to that organisation. Um, so it's, it's, yeah, so we're currently in Tasmania. I forgot to put the slide up of all the other organisations we're with. It's, I'm not here to <laughs> show you well. We're working with all these companies, but that's who we're working with in Tassie. I think one of the important things, what we're trying to do is prioritise, because what will happen is you'll do this pre and post intervention and post assessment, you'll see if you've not made a change. Sometimes it is an engineering solution to, to change things. And that's okay, but at least we've quantified that. At least we've given an answer to that. The intervention that you've, that you've tried to introduce has made no difference. But that's okay because you're still trying to work to make a difference rather than just, oh, it's okay, just dismiss it. So prioritising is really important. And then we can reassess. That's the really important thing. So Joint Action Solutions, it can do lots of things. It's automated risk assessment, so that's the first thing. It's stopping that manual biases, those manual assessments that we do. It's reducing MSDs, and in Australia's largest supplier of letters, they've done over 60,000 assessments. So I'll present some of their data uh, over a 12-month window. They've had it for over three years now, but I'll just present the 12-month window. <coughs> and, all, and that's where these 23 to 26% less of work-related musculoskeletal claims, and then 20% reduction in premiums. We're not about improving your bottom line. They're the beneficial side effects. What we're about is trying to reduce MSDs in the workplace, trying to get better control of risk. You do those things, you'll get the financial benefits. Because of the COVID experience, um, it can be done solely by the individual, so they can connect the straps to themselves, so you don't have to touch the, the sensors. You can just open the kit, they can then clean the sensors, and everything gets shut down that way. So that's been uh, a feature we've had to create during COVID. 
Once you've got a battery of assessments, what, what you'll then will is have a bit of a task library. And this is really beneficial because what, so we're learning things as we go along, um, that's the beauty of technology, is that return to work matters. Because normally, historically, someone's returning to work, they'll go to the dock, the dock will write 5 kg, can't lift more than that. And then they'll, what does that mean? What we're trying to do is create a task library and these 10 uh, tasks are no good for that person because that loads their back too much. These 30 tasks they can do at work because, and we can give them the objective data. We can show the load, the risk score on the low back and how that gets loaded. So it's really been great in returning people to work at work, getting them engaged into the workplace and starting their return to work at work rather than at home or sitting in the office just doing paperwork. So it's been pretty powerful in the return to work component. And if you have to go down the legal path, then that, that helps too, because you've obviously done some assessments. Uh, these are the sort of five areas that really help, because it helps you identify things easier and quicker. So task analysis of all tasks, you identify the risk and you set priorities. What does that mean? Well, the ones that are scoring are higher, they're the ones you need to target first. So it just gives you a place to begin. You can look at the contributing factors. Obviously, the, the code of practice is biased to low back because they're the, they're the injuries that stop people working. They're the people that are, the, sorry, they're the people that never return to work and they are the most costly injuries that occur in the workplace. And the engagement of workers, is, is it still blows me away um, just how quickly we were at a large retailer the other day. We're out in the warehouse going up at a six, six litre skip. Because the problem in, in, this was at a electrical retailer, so the problem is all of the um, big things like the TVs now, because they're 75 centimetres, they used to be up high because they were pretty light, but now they're so big and so awkward, they've all come down to the ground level and the things like dishwashers and ovens, they're all now up on the third level. So we're looking at a guy doing this t um, in the picker, so he reaches out, grabs, but the oven he had to step out, he's still hooked in, step out, and it was really awkward. And then when he comes down, we look at it and we go, oh, okay, there's a few things we can tweak there. He starts talking. And he says, yeah, I've had a sore back for about three months. I'm there with the guy who's the assessor who works for the organisation, didn't even know that this bloke's had a sore back for the last three months. But they still go to work. They still do their job. But is that a back problem that's going to go pear-shaped? Or is it a back problem because he's just not doing it quite right? Or how do we tweak this and improve this so he doesn't keep loading his back every day before, remember, they accumulate. So how do we nip this in the bud now so that this guy goes home today feeling, oh, we've, we've changed some things at work, we've introduced some things, this will help. And it was really quite powerful at that organisation for the worker and for the physio uh, at that site who, who goes to various sites for that organisation. Ironically, we went there to assess someone else who wasn't there that day, and this just got picked up just by doing that assessment. So it was quite, quite powerful. And evaluation. We, it's important we stop the biases, the human components around evaluations and assessments. This stops all that because it's objective and uh, it's accurate. <clears throat> so they're all the numbers for people who love numbers. Uh, it's pretty powerful and that was across Australia's largest supplier of letters and parcels. And their business has gone crazy in the last 18 months. Um, some some organisations have gone gangbusters uh, through COVID, and, and some are still struggling, but they've done significantly better uh, with these things just from doing over 60,000 assessments. They're up to now. The column on the left, that's the risk score column. That's what's in the Australian Codes of Practice Hazardous Manual Handling. <coughs> um, and it's aligned with the UK um, Health and Safety Executive Hazardous Manual Task Assessment Methods. So we focus on the task. We do not assess the person. We do not assess how they're moving. We get a risk score based on these, these two assessments. That's what we've been able to do because we created when we were working with Bosch at um, FMP Bendix in Ballarat. So that's a large brake pad manufacturing plant. We created a, a 280 question checklist and they, they thought it was wonderful. But for us, it was a pain in the bum. Because to stand there and do an assessment with 280 questions, you're filming the task and then you're trying to interpret what you see based on all these questions and it's through the code of practice in both those organisations and you get a risk score. It took a couple of weeks. It was just time consuming. So 
it's been fortuitous to say, well, how can we do this better? And that's where the technology has been great because we've, we've basically chucked those 280 questions from those two organisations into the census and they answer everything about those things that we would normally interpret and come up with a risk score. Uh, one of the other key factors of, of what we've been able to achieve is the manual inputs post-assessment. So you've done an assessment, you've now got a risk score, then you'll hit a button and you'll go into what's called the detailed assessment and then you'll add in these things. And these things, what they do is task repeats, so over the shift, meaning if you might have filmed someone, over the shift, how many times would you do that task? So that'll then give you a different number. The duration of the task, you may have just filmed it for three minutes, but the task goes for 12 minutes. So then you'll plug in 12 minutes and the perception of load based on the Borg theory that we use in sport, uh, none, light, medium or heavy. For example, if I said you go and pick up that chair, go put it over in that corner, some of you will perceive that as light, some of you will perceive that as heavy. So then what we're doing is getting an assessment that is more accurate for that person doing that task because that's always a really important thing because that we, we go to several organisations and do the same job, but we get different risk scores. What's going on there? Why have we got two different risk scores for exactly the same job? Because of the human element, the human efficiency, the perception that someone has on that load that they've moved, it's how they're feeling that day. All of those factors get put in to the assessment post-assessment, so the manual inputs. It's a bit like if I examine a knee, I can see the knee swollen, I'll look at the ligaments, I'll look at the cruciate, I'll look at your kneecap. All of this more information we get, we're able to make a more accurate assessment. And that's the same thing that we're doing here. You add more information, it's relevant to that task assessment, it becomes a more sensitive assessment. What's that mean? It's a true reflection. You're getting a better understanding and a more accurate understanding of what's going on. So we're getting this meaningful data versus junk data. Junk data is, is a real, we, we fell into that trap when I was working with the Brisbane Lions, so we, you get all the wanky new technology and all that happens is you measure all these things pre-season on everyone that comes in. What do you do with it then? It just gets stored and we never use it through the season. Oh, then we'll do it again next season. We'll, we'll do a pre-season evaluation again. So we have this data that is not meaningful in lots of these assessment tools, but not when you're calculating a risk score. It's not a movement analysis, it's a risk score. So the outcome for you in the workplace is you're getting better risk controls. That's the whole reason why we're doing these automated task assessments, is trying to get better control of risk within the workplace, MSD risk. That will then improve your decision making. As stated, all assessments are stored in the cloud, so that's great when you're, when you're a bigger organisation operating across several sites, um, and then we can compare tasks across sites. So you're able as a group then to be more accurate in where you need to target your people, where you need to target your resources and evaluating what you're doing. Makes it really powerful. And they're the things that have occurred across that organisation for over 12 months. <clears throat> so you've got, you're getting a mixture of, and this is sort of, this will probably change over the years as we're adding things and getting more information on this automated system. So there's a column of direct benefits, and we've discussed a few of those already. But the nice thing is you, you're improving employer physical and mental health. People actually like being cared about. People actually like feeling good about their job. People like you actually showing an interest in what they're doing. These are powerful things that you can do using this system. And the indirect benefits was the employer engagement. It's, it blew me away, and still does, because I just can't believe the silent worker who grumbles and moans and, and you know, is the, oh, they're always been difficult. All of a sudden, you've got people talking. You've got people who are interested in what they do for the first time because they want to make a difference. They want to feel better how they feel and how they feel after doing their job. Being sore, stiff and grumpy is not fun. Sometimes in some of the jobs, particularly I do stuff within the shearing sheds, it's hard. But how do you make those people feel better? How do you make those people enjoy their job more? The other side benefits is we're getting less turnover and absenteeism in the workforce because you're creating that best practice, that good outcome for people and improved productivity, which all the um, CFOs love in organisations. So they're the direct and indirect benefits using the automated system. So what are your next steps? Remember, it's assess, 
intervene, reassess, bang, bang, bang. Those three components will then help you get better risk controls, get better management of risk within your workplace related to your work-related MSDs. Um, that's us. It's my great-great-grandmother came to Hobart in 1834. Her name is Jessie White. So I am familiarly linked to this wonderful city. So thank you. I just thought I should end on that note. So that's my mum's side of the family. So my mad grandmother was born in Zeehan in 1894. I don't know if anyone's been born in Zeehan, but they were a, uh, a mining family and that's where they were. No one else would... Pardon me if you live in Zeehan, but um, I've been there once just to see where Elsie Annie lived and uh, it was a tough old city. So uh, thank you for the opportunity. Look, it's, it's, this is sort of, I, know, I don't mean to use the word groundbreaking, but we're finding that as we use this product more and more, um, it's been pretty powerful in the changes that it can create because we're trying to simplify something that is complex, hard and challenging. I won't deny that. It, it can be challenging in the workplace to get on top of MSDs. And this has been pretty powerful in the last, um, we finished the project in 2017, so it's been a, it's, it's not easy to try and go from a research project into a commercial item. Uh, we're all uh, currently working other jobs to help fund this project, so we've only got two people in the organisation that, that work full time, so it's, it is a juggle, and, but, but this is my passion to help, help people in the workplace, so thank you. Are there any questions? I can do an assessment. We've got the kit here. If you would like to see an assessment or what you would like to do, it's pretty easy to set up. Got time. time? Okay. I'm not on a plane tool. <coughs> it only uses so iPad or iPhone. That's the first thing. It's it's not um, Android, so it's only Apple. Um, underground mining has been our biggest challenge because um, uh, the sensors are okay. They're low emission Bluetooth. And as I said, the sensors, um, so when you buy a kit, it comes like that. You, the sensors are that big. They all sit. If you come up, you can jump up and I'll turn the thing on. I'll probably need internet to turn that on. <coughs> are there any questions while I'm hiding behind here, just getting at the... Yeah, sure. Yep. Didn't know from Mantra and the other tools and other Mantra and Reebok, yep. Yes. It's the latter. So the, 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 the sensors will measure the angle of the joint and that will relay that information back to the algorithm then is created based on the Reba and yeah. all the other. It's predominantly the Australian Code of Practice yeah. and the UK HSE. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's taking the practitioner out of it and turning yes. it into a, a tech, technology tool yeah. so anyone can apply it without that kind of Yeah, and, and not that we're trying to eliminate what the um, physio and ergonomist does. What we're trying to do is actually be, make something that is complex simpler so more people can use it. So then if more people use it, you're going to get, have a better outcome across that workforce rather than actually just getting the experts in post-event. Which it's, So we're often doing things reactively rather than actually trying to nip things in the butter early. Yes, so when you, get, when you do an assessment, you can then, I'll just turn it all on. When you, when you get an assessment, what you can do is you can scroll through. So there's a timeline. So from that, you can then look at that and oh, there's that peak moment or there's the back is bent at that angle. Within the assessment too, it'll have shading and the shading is based on repetition and duration. So the duration is a task that is held in one position for longer than 30 seconds and the repetition is done more than twice in 30 seconds. And that will then highlight that, that'll shade that as well, so it gives you a little focus when you're getting the graphs, because you get a graph of the neck, the low back, and the, and the shoulders. So you know the element of the task in your address? Yes. Does it pick up vibration? No. no. But what it will do is, that's where you can then go back into the manual inputs. 
So then you can put in gloves. So in some of so when we're at Visi Glass, so they're using gloves and tongs to reach things that are hot. So there's a hot environment. It's awkward because they're in PPE. Um, so you can then add add that back into the risk assessment, and that will then. It's a bit like those manual inputs. We can do that in 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 the post assessment. Yes. Yeah, we, we haven't had as much as we thought we would because when you look across a task, uh, so there might, there'll be some variations, but it doesn't really alter the task score significantly. So it's a good learning tool, so for inductions, for new employees, for return to work people. So the new employees it's been really helpful with, and then the return to work people it's been helpful with as well. Uh, we always have someone, it's a bit like a shearing shed, you know, you've got someone who can shear 400 sheep a day, you've got someone who can shear 200 sheep a day, uh, they'll get paid differently because they're in a piece system, but if we were to film both of those people shearing us sheep, they would probably have very sim similar risk scores, just one person is faster at it than the other. One person is stronger, one person is not necessarily better at it, they're just faster and stronger. It doesn't measure those things. I guess you imagine that people do do the same tasks slightly differently. Yes, yes. And Well, the risk score is, yeah, well, depending on where that risk score sits, so whether it's 0 to 20, 20 to 70, 70 to 200, or above 400. So depending on where the risk score will sit will determine what you then do. So meaning is there any, because that's the thing is we often think, oh, that's a crappy job. Someone's going to get hurt doing that. We'll assess that, and it's actually not too bad. And this innocuous job over there is actually worse than we thought it would be. So it's trying to get those human factors, because we're all humans, eliminated so that we can get better understanding and more accuracy of task assessments. Our ergonomist is, um, is so we're doing work with um, Steve Cowley, he's one of our directors, he, he worked at um, Ballarat, set up the uni there around Work Health Place, and he's now living in Wales, and then Michael Lawrence is our ergonomist, for Forbes Smith, he set up um, NabbyNet years ago. So Forbes set up NabbyNet. He's one of our directors as well. Dennis Guy is an insurance. He ran Jardines in Asia for 25 years. He's our, um, he don't runs that side. So we've got all these senior people that have got great industry expertise that we're trying to obviously get this product uh, up and happening. So, But we're, we're, we're very happy with where it's at, but we can't rest on where it's at now because like any technology, it's always improving. The one thing that we had to get really better at was say if you were filming someone and there was a big pole in the way and all of a sudden if the iPad couldn't talk to the sensors, the, sen the task it would drop out. So we've now been able to auto log. So the sensors just store everything and then what will happen is if the picture disappears, you stop the assessment and it just dumps all that information back in. So while you may have lost the vision, you'll still have all the data. So that's, they're sort of examples of the stuff that we've had to get better at. And, we're, and pleasingly, that works very well now. So, um, when you identify the risky jobs and the risky postures, yep. how do you go from there? Do you get a professional in to say, why do um, you change the way we do this? Well, often, often once you pull up a task assessment, what you'll then say to the person is, is, this is the area that looks like this is quite high. You can see these spikes here. Can you consider how... So, so when the really big thing at the abattoirs is the people are all relatively short. That was the thing that blew us away when we started filming people. But they're building, it's like everything, a chair is built for someone who's in between five foot six and six foot six. So if you're in between that or below that, you're gonna struggle. So that's, that's so, sort of some of the information we're trying to do is, is you talked about that stuff, that, that task for that person would you think would be harder and yeah, it is. So what we've then had to introduce is some steps, or instead of reaching for the boxes at the top, where they're on their tippy toes all day, and that's an empty box, then they put it, they would always, in the meat industry, they always put boxes this way. So there's a conveyor of meat coming along, they plump, and then they would then shove that box through. What they're doing is getting the meat off there, but if you then put the packets this way, they're then closer. They're not having to reach as much. So no one actually thought of that, but because they do this is because I can put more meat, I can do three boxes instead of two. Because <laughs> it all comes about, um, that's an example of the organisational stuff, but until we actually filmed it, it was like, I said, have you considered turning the box the other way? Oh, it's about productivity. 
That's always a challenge in the workplace, in manufacturing, and it's about productivity. I said, well, have a look at this risk score, and because what happens in the meat industry, you do a job for two hours before you have a break. So they work really hard, they just do um, three 12 hour days, that's the other thing, so they flog them really hard, do three 12 hour days and have four off. So it's a pretty high job load when you're there. So it's a bit like, well if they're there, how do we then tweak that differently? So we're just trying to get people to think a bit differently rather than numbers games. And that's hard in manufacturing or any sort of physical job, often it's numbers games. So that's what we're trying to get people to understand, those sorts of things. Yeah, well, what it, did, what, it, what, what it did was when we were out at, um, that was at Stanbroke, which is, they just do Wagyu beef. So they only do Wagyu beef. And, and, and um, what that means is that it's an expensive cut of meat and they want to get it right and they want to make sure that they're getting it all packaged well so they're not having any spoils. But what it meant was is that you could actually be just as efficient. So then we turned the boxes around and then did that same task and they were able to get, count the number of pieces because you can count it. So you can go through frame by frame by frame and you can count how many pieces of meat you will then transfer in two minutes, turn the boxes the other way, do it again, see how many pieces of meat. So that's then to help the CFO, the operations people understand these decision makers. You can actually, that's a better scenario for that person and there's only a 10% difference or 10% less by turning the boxes that way. And what's the person say? Oh, I feel so much better. Well, you've got a bit of a win-win there. So it's actually trying to evaluate what you're doing. That's, that was sort of the things that we've been able to achieve in the workplace. Um, so there's... <coughs> we, yeah, yeah. Does someone want to put the sensors on or do you, someone want to film me? Do you want to film me? Do you want to be the guinea pig? I'll better put my glasses on because that always works better. Okay. So they're all uh, labelled. So we'll get low back. Uh, in the meat industry, and depending on where we work, we, we'll go to, we go to rubber because things stick to Velcro, uh, which isn't good in that industry. So, um, Have they really done anything like in the medical, sort of nursing home? Ah, that's, that's, yeah, that's where we're trying to get. So low back, you can either put it in the centre of low back or on the hip. It doesn't, doesn't really matter because sometimes we'll have in ind industries where they're face down and they're crawling. So putting something at the back here, the sensor's going to come off. So putting it on the side of the hip, so that's another thing we had to learn because at some of the mines, people are getting under equipment, diesel mechanics and things. So that's the low back one. The blue lights are always vertical. Um, you can pretend you're a bit of a rock star with now because what we do is then get the head one. Uh, so if you're in a hard hat or a net or something, um, often we can use these or there's a clip system that just goes around the head so that just sits um, there, then the upper back, remember the dots as I said are always at the top, so the upper back just goes around there, thank you, good, so you can see all the blue lights are vertical, then we've got two for the arms, uh, we're doing more, we, we understand there's a limitation uh, with elbow and wrist, it's, it's been requested across a couple of organisations, so we're actually tweaking a few things to try and improve that. Uh, what we're in the process of is creating um, automatic Im automated imaging, so for example, when we would film you, the lines of the human body appear on you, so it can then measure your elbow angle and your wrist angle as you're doing things, so that's, that's the next thing that we're adding in. <clears throat> not really, because not a lot of claims are based around okay. knees, so that's, that's why we haven't done that. But the hand, particularly the hand and wrist, is, is interesting. Uh, so that's your right, and then that looks like when you put in the dot, that goes to 12 o'clock, so if you're looking at a watch, that's why that's on that, that side. So that's 12. Have we got internet? No, no, so at... at um, at, a, at one organisation, we don't film it at all. They just we turn the video off. So within the within the sense setting page, you can turn no, there's a capture video or no video. So they don't want to be filmed yeah. at this organisation. So we just turn the capture video off. Okay. And you can still make sense. Of yeah, you'll still get, but but it, you don't then understand. What they were doing. Yes. <laughs> so so that element's lost. 
So that's, but that's, that's, that's the union were quite strict on that. They don't want to see people's faces. And they said, well, we can blur them post-assessment via the portal. No, nah, they don't want to be seen. Okay, so we just turn it off. Yep. Yep. You know what the steps they go through. Yep. You put it on there uh, more in a natural setting. So yeah. So, so some of the um, organisations want to um, put it on and leave it on. Yes. Right. Just to, to yeah. sort of, and it's really. I said, well, we're, we're trying to assess tasks, not what not what happens in two hours. Yeah. So not what you do for two hours. So you can do that, but then. You've got to then sit there for quite a while and work out what's meaningful yeah, and what's not meaningful. Too much data. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So then, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so you've then you, then all you do is just break that down into lots of tasks. But um, yeah, it's not that not that helpful really. So so but the one I went to when I went to store gold mine, we were able to do 17 task assessments in a day. So when I go to Swickers next week at Kingaroy, we're going to do 10 over two days. So it sort of depends on how structured is the organisation. So um, I, my preference is to teach the health and safety people how to use it rather than us have to physically go there because you're going to deal with it every day. We, we love working with you, but we don't want to see you every day. <laughs> but yeah. what we want you is to, how to use it and teach you how to use it. Yeah, that's um, so you can all do all those things. If you click on work task, so if I add a work task, so we are, say, so Grand Chancellor. Save. That'll then appear in this column. Grand Chancellor, boom. So I go over there. So I'm. So then, Grand Chancellor site. We're in room six. I think this is. So then you can make more specific around where you are in organisations, work area. You could be wherever you want to describe. Shift, AM, night, PM. All those things. Person. You, these are things that you can or not not add. Then you would save that, so then that comes into there. Then I press that. We then have to normalise you. It's just, can we make you normal? Turn and face that way. <laughs> so it just means you just stand there, make sure all the sensors are on. We just hit normalise, bang. Good, and start. Great, do you want to pick up that chair? Yep. You know, bend over and stay stay there and pick it up five times. Your back's okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you want me to bend Just over? Just pick it up, put it down, pick it up, put it down, move it around. Good. Just good, good reach, ouch. Good. Yep, and then I'll just stop and save that. So say we might have filmed, you've got to sort of do at least a minute that's really not enough. So you've got to, we like you anything but sort of 15 minute max but, and more than two minutes to really get a good understanding of what the task is. So we'll just stop there. Then we go back. So I've sort of tried to do it badly in some cases. Yeah, so that says, even that comes up as a low risk. And from there, yep. then we can go into, we click that button and add extra information. So, so the add extra, full task duration, well, you did that for that long, how long would that job normally take you to do? Then we could click that yep. and then we'll make that. So it goes from, a, it's currently at a risk score of 13.5. If we do full task duration. I think. So where I've done it uh, not well, yes. in, in amongst that, does that sort of? Yeah, I'll show you the full task. Task repeats, how many times would you do that in a shift? I don't know, make it 10, 20 times, 20 times. 4,000. 12 hours, we might do that, say, stacking 60 chairs, Yep, that's a good idea. save, and then that becomes a high risk task that goes from 18 to 273 by saying you just do that 60 times. Yep. Now then in the video, see what we can do here is see if we can scroll through. Now see your back section, see how that's raised, that red section, because that yep. was sustained flexion because you leaned over and stayed there for a while. Yes. And that's why that is raised and that's why that is shaded. 
and it's also picked up rotating. Yeah, so you've got rotation through yeah. your neck. If you look at your head position, you turn to the right as well. So that's why it's picked up that neck rotation and side flexion. It's picked that up. So that's yeah. why that's got three bars instead of one. Yeah. But you can see your back's got, it's, it has one, two or three bars. And from that, then we can say, well, that's the high demand area of that task. How could you, and see how you're pushing that out. And so that correlates nicely with the graph, with the motion. So that then gives a risk score, and then from that I can then click on the report, and I get a summary assessment. So that'll say uh, the bulk of that summary assessment of that original total was 13.5, but 8.8 .8 of that was at the low back. So that's over 70% of that task was low back load. Even though it was only small, but do that 60 times, do that for a longer period of time, it becomes quite high. So it's then how do we tweak that, how do we improve that, how do we change that, how do we change feet position, all those things that you do every day, but we're able to then have a conversation about, oh, have you considered doing it this way, or do you think you could do this differently? So, you know, empower the person, get them to make the decisions. But it just helps then tweak and change things. Yeah. And then the beauty is then I can then hit the send button and I can Gmail, air, uh, what's that called? Airdrop mail, chuck it in Dropbox, so there's all things you can do with that report straight away. Because the assessments are on this, that's nice, but not helping the organisation. So that's why you then dump it into the portal so that you can all then look at it. So would there be many times where you haven't realised that the duration of the task is reduced? No, normally, yeah, norm normally we're not getting a you can stand there for 15 minutes and film a task if it's like a, say if you're doing a big diesel tyre and changing that, that might take about 15 minutes so you'll film that whole task. The difference when, just when we do that, that's significantly harder underground versus at ground level in the, in the, fitter, in the fitter shop. But um, that's just a by the by because I remember we looked at those two scenarios. Thank you. Um, sorry, what was your question again? It just triggered that yeah, memory. Ah, so so even like for these workers, we said they work 12 hours Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they they tend to rotate them. So what they'll do is they'll go from packing, they'll pack different cuts. If you're in the packing area, you do packing. If you're in the boning area and slicing, they'll tend to just rotate them in different positions. So for example, um, you, as the beasts come through, you've got people there, comes down, and then you've got a table below, and people will be around that table. So all they'll do there is every two hours is change the position. The same with the packers, they'll go through different cuts of meat from bigger and smaller, and so they're the, they're the variations they're doing to try and reduce the loads that occur to the body. Yeah, but it is, some jobs are tough. You know, you can't, you can't deny it's not challenging to do a 12 hour shift and do three of those. And what do they normally do day four? They're stuffed. They sleep, they walk around a bit, they don't do a lot. So, because they're pretty tired. It's the same with you fly in, fly out. You know, you're two weeks on, two weeks off. All those organisational things can, can be a challenge in the workplace. But, but the automation of task assessment has been, um, is pretty powerful, so it's pretty easy to do. So can you give a bit more detail on the cost of this? Uh, yeah, it's a good question. So the cost, um, it's, it's, there's, there's a one-off cost of a licence fee. So the licence fee is about 5k, and then you pay a monthly subscription of a 1k per one unit. So that's $12,000, and then there's, um, there's one more fee, which I can't remember. But it's basically to get one kit for 12 months is 20k, and, but that one-off cost of your 5K of licence fee is gone. It just then becomes a monthly subscription of $990 per month after year one. Now you can do, you know, as a, as a physio, you'd go and charge three to 4K to rock into a place and do a report and send it two weeks later. So you can see if you're doing, we're trying to get you to do lots of assessments because then you'll understand how it works and the benefits of it. But, um, um, the meat industry has been a challenge, just trying to get, so I'll go there and do trials, and then, oh man, because they need to see it, because to ask someone to pay 20K up front, oh no, no, no I want to see how it works, so, so then yeah, that's okay, they'll, they'll be happy to spend 6K for a few days trial, and then, oh, okay, that's really good, and then, we'll look, then, then, then they'll, they'll buy it, so yeah, but that's the, they're the costs, essentially, 20K, one kit, one licence for 12 months. Yeah. 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 So yeah. What is the, the benefit they're getting from this in terms of looking at the work differently and coming up with different controls and measures? 
they're really they're really worried about common law claims in the meat industry. They, that, that, it's every time we go to a meeting in the meat industry, it's common law claims. What can you do about that? Well, a common law claim in the meat industry will cost them anywhere between 150 to 200k. So instantly, we'll say, well, we can hopefully offset that cost by implementing a system that where you are assessing how your workers do their work. And a lot of the things, it, what it means is around a boardroom is that you'll have discussions around how can we do this better? How can we be financial? How can we be cost saving? How can we look after our people better? The real challenge for the meat industry is that they normally have a fairly itinerant workforce and that's stopped. So there would normally be 250,000 backpackers running around Australia, there's only 50,000. So they're all at Byron Bay working in cafes. They're not, they're not out of the middle of nowhere in, a, in an abattoir for two months when they've got to do their country thing. So it's been really difficult. So the retaining your workforce, looking after your workforce has even become more critical for them. So, we've, so that's been quite a useful <laughs> tool for us because you've got to look after these people. You just can't piss them off after three months because you've got to look after them. So how do you do it better? That's what we've been trying to do. And pork and beef and lamb and chicken, they're all really different. They're all really different. <laughs> they all think really differently. Um, so that's, you've got to sort of wear different baseball caps when you go into each one. Yep. So the algorithm then, and again, that's the remote process. Yep. When they initially do that, yep. the start of the shift, the fresh of those, they're going to look perfect. Yep. That's our 10 or 11 as well. Yeah. So we... The body posture is going to be different. Their fatigue is going to be different. Yes. Yes. Well, that's where that perception of load will, will change as well. So how, how do you perceive where you're at today? That may be all those psychosocial factors, the fact you're tired, crappy, feeling, feeling fatigued. They're the elements we're, back, we're adding back in because we want to be more accurate because we're realising of those things that happen in the workplace. As I said, we're human people, so we're not robots. So we feel, we, we, we are cranky, happy, sad, all of those things we take to work. So how do we then measure those things based around tasks? So that's, that's the stuff we're doing to add that back in further. But the detail, when we go into a detailed assessment, it is really detailed, um, meaning the back end of information. So when you go back in, depending, there's two, the add extra information and then at the bottom you write detailed data and that can be um, load handed or seated. So there's high and heavy loads. Are you doing it seated? Are you doing it standing? Difficult or awkward? Required to use gloves? Required to clear? All these things occur and then you write down the percentage that you would do that within that task. So that will add in all those things and there is multiple questions there to do that around the detailed data. So adding detailed data and adding those manual inputs back at the end of the assessment, as I said, makes it more accurate, makes it more understanding. Because as I said, not everyone perceives the same load or the same job the same way. So where did your weighting data come from? Right? That's from Borg. That's from that perception that people have in sport. So that's sports methodology. Like when we do, in sport, we'll talk about a rate of perceived exertion. So we'll rate them anywhere between zero to seven. So seven, they're staff, zero, it's easy. Where are you within that? We had to then try and make that easier. And in the Borg, they use that none, light, medium, and heavy. We found that if you give people, we used to have seven choices in there. If you give people more choices, uh, it just becomes confusing for some workers. So we've just made it four choices. So that'll then just make that a bit more accurate and easier to fill in. Yeah, pleasure. Thank you very much. Um, if, you, if anyone wants to see more of it, please, I'll be here for a bit. So um, I'll go down to Salamanca for lunch if someone wants to shout me lunch, that'd be nice, but anyway. Um, <laughs> Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you very much. And please contact us if you need any further information. It's on the brochure, so thanks. <laughs>